Hey guys, in this video I'm going to talk about limits as x approaches positive or negative infinity and how this relates to horizontal asymptotes. So let's just jump right into it. So first of all, what is a horizontal asymptote? So if I gave you a graph, something that looks like this, so a lot of times people already know that, you know, it's it's like this invisible line. So it's, I, I put this dotted line here. So it's this invisible line that the graph won't cross, but it'll get really close to. Now, that's that's usually kind of how we think of it. But now what we want to do is basically change this for a calculus viewpoint. So now instead of thinking of it just as this thing on a graph, from a calculus viewpoint, we think of this actually as a horizontal asymptote exists at y equals b if the limit as x approaches. It could be either positive or negative infinity. If this limit approaches a number, then that number is the horizontal asymptote. Okay, so this can kind of play out in a lot of different ways. So I, I wanted to show you kind of how you, you might work through these. So the question here would be find the horizontal asymptotes. And what that's basically asking you to do is for you to know that you need to take the limit as x approaches infinity. So if I wanted to look at this, so let's start with the limit as x approaches positive infinity. So in this case, and, and this is going to be different now for, for every limit that we look at. So in this case, we're looking at absolute value, which if you're familiar with absolute value, so the whole thing about absolute value is kind of thinking about what side are you on, the positive side or the negative side. So if x is going to positive infinity, this would be kind of the positively sloped side. So I'll just, here's, here's my graph of absolute value. So we're talking about being on this side of the absolute value. This would be the function just straight up x. However, now what I have to do is just write this as x cubed instead. So I could restate this problem as x cubed plus 2 over x cubed minus 1. So I can do this because I know how absolute value works and I know what side of the function I'm on. So this is kind of the goals that you want to rewrite the limit. Okay, so now that I look at it like this, this actually looks just like a rational expression. And so I have another video where I've talked about evaluating limits at infinity with uh, rational expressions. So what you want to do here then is just divide everything by the highest power. So let me show you what that looks like. Okay, so I went ahead and I divided every single part of this problem by the largest power of x, which is x cubed. So all of this will simplify then to 1 plus 2 over x cubed, and then this is 1 minus 1 over x cubed. And so basically now, this part and this part, um, the, the parts that are being divided by an x, these are both going to 0. If you need an explanation of why, you can check out some of my other videos on that. And so this limit will equal 1. So what you want to do after you've, you've evaluated the limit is then state your horizontal asymptote. My horizontal asymptote in this case is going to be y equals 1. So I'll just write ha here. So it's not enough just to evaluate the limit. You do want to actually interpret it. And we're not totally done. So this said just to, the directions here to just to find the horizontal asymptotes. So this is what happened as x went to positive infinity, but now we still need to consider what happens as x goes to negative infinity. So now let me just erase all of this. And now we've got to go the other direction, i.e. we've got to evaluate what happens as x goes to negative infinity of the exact same function. And so once again, we want to rewrite all of this without the absolute value. You, you can't just bust out the trick of dividing everything until you've you've actually kind of thought a little more uh, clearly about what this absolute value means. So in this case, I'm on the negative side of this, right? So it's going to negative infinity. So if you consider the absolute value function, so now if we're going towards the negative infinity direction, we're on this leg of kind of the absolute value function, how it behaves. So this is the negative side. So the reason that I need to think about that is that this will allow me to rewrite my limit as now negative x cubed plus 2 over x cubed minus 1. And so now that I'm, I'm working through this, I can see that I can actually evaluate this one step farther, right? So I could just rewrite this as just negative x cubed. I'll just write it like this. And now I can divide everything by x cubed again. And I'm, I'm actually going to omit kind of all the work for that and just kind of jump to the next step. So in this case, this will become negative 1 plus 
2 over x cubed and then 1 minus 1 over x cubed. And so once again, these parts here, these are both going to go to 0. But this limit is going to equal negative 1 over 1. So on this side, we have a horizontal asymptote at y equals negative 1. So it actually can matter sometimes which side of the graph you're on. And, some, and a lot of times you're going to have to kind of investigate both um, positive and negative infinity. Oops, I'm sorry. This should have been negative infinity here. Sorry. Um, so hopefully that, that kind of makes sense. So now let's pivot to this next one. And so if I think about it, if I think about the limit as x approaches just positive infinity of 3x, so just think about what happens as you put larger and larger numbers into this particular function. It's just going to get bigger, right? 3 squared, 3 cubed, 3 to the 27th. It's just going to get really, really big. So as I go to positive infinity, this really doesn't have like an asymptote on that side. This is just going to keep getting infinitely large. So th this particular function goes to infinity. But what happens as x goes to negative infinity of 3 to the x? Now, just a pro tip here. You never want to plug infinity in on anything you're ever turning in. Um, if you write down something like this, infinity is not a number. You can't plug it in and evaluate with it. I get why people do this, um, but like it's a, it's, it's kind of like a formal mathematics thing. So you, you want to kind of make sure you're, you're, you're representing and, and, and keeping the formality of it. But <laughs> as a thought exercise, if we think through this, so just think about what happens with negative exponents. With negative exponents, what this would mean is that we'd actually turn this into a fraction. So what I can do with this actually to help me kind of think through this, this exercise a little bit better, I can write an equivalent limit like this. So instead of having now x going to negative infinity, I'm going to rewrite this as x goes to positive infinity, except I'm going to call this 3 to the negative x. So this is really the same thing, right? These two things are equivalent. And maybe I'll draw a line right here, say this is this was its own thing, and now we're in a new problem here. So this I can now manipulate. So this becomes the limit as x approaches infinity of 1 over 3 to the x. And now when I look at this, I can think about what I know as x goes to infinity with a fraction. Well, the denominator is going to grow more and more and more but the overall value of the fraction is going to go to 0. So this actually equals 0. So there is a horizontal asymptote at y equals 0 as x approaches negative infinity. We found it. So sometimes you can have one, sometimes you might not. So this last one is actually just me making a plug for um, another limits video that I have. Uh, so if you want to see more examples of just working with like rational expressions, uh, you'll want to check out my limits video uh, as x goes to uh, positive or negative infinity. But if I need to find my horizontal asymptotes here, so this is actually a nice and straightforward example. In this case, you would just divide everything by x. And if you do that, you get 3 plus... 1 over x and then 5 plus 2 over x. And so if, this is just where I want to make that plug for. If, if you want to see more explanation on this, check out some of my other videos. And so then as x goes to infinity, these parts here are going to go to 0. So this whole thing will equal 3 fifths. And you'll get the same thing if you were to evaluate the limit as x goes to negative infinity. So um, what this means then is that we have a horizontal asymptote at y equals 3 fifths. So don't forget to state this part about the horizontal asymptote if that's the question being asked. Now, the last thing I want to talk about in this video is that sometimes horizontal asymptotes arise in surprising situations. So we're still looking to find horizontal asymptotes of this particular function. Now, it doesn't have any fractional values to it, so just looking at it, you might not think, oh, how could this have any horizontal asymptotes? And now I'm going to kind of show you how to work with this. So first of all, if I think about the limit as x approaches infinity of x minus the square root of x squared plus 4, so Maybe your gut reaction is to say, oh, well, there's an x right here, so, you know, it's going to go to infinity, so whatever. 
That probably would have been my first gut reaction when I was taking calculus. But you have to actually consider this square root as well. And think about what's being, what's kind of dominating in this square root. In this square root, you have the x squared. And if you take the x squared with the square root, you get, so the square root of x squared is just equal to x. So I bring this up because this actually is what makes this problem so weird. What you really have is you might have thought at first, oh, well, you've got this x here. And so, you know, the infinity is just going to drown it out and whatever. But what's happening is we're also subtracting off effectively this other dominating term of um, a factor of x, if that makes sense. So what that means then is we have to be actually a little bit more careful in how we think about this. And you also can't just plug infinity in to necessarily figure this out, right? Again, infinity is not a number. So what we're going to do here to see if we can get some more clarity on this is we're actually going to multiply by the conjugate of this. So I'm actually going to multiply the top and bottom by this thing here, x plus the square root of x squared plus 4. We use this trick a lot with limits. Oops. I don't know why that just happened. Okay. And so if I multiply all of this together, I get x squared minus x squared plus 4. And I'm not going to do anything to the denominator for a moment, okay? So I just want to work on the top part. So now if I work out the top part, what I get is the limit as x approaches infinity of negative 4 over x plus the square root of x squared plus 4. And so now we can actually pretty clearly see what the answer here is. Um, so if I am just looking at this now, so the denominator now I've got really x plus this other square root of x, like I'm just adding all this stuff together as x is going to infinity. So the denominator is going to get very, very large very, very quickly, which is going to drown out the whole fraction. So this whole thing will actually just equal zero. And I've kind of explained that logic in uh, my other video. So if you again are looking for a longer explanation on that, you can kind of see that there. But here we can see that infinity is really drowning out the denominator. So the whole thing's going to go to zero. So surprisingly, this whole thing will actually equal zero. And now for just one more limit where we try to find the horizontal asymptote. So here's the last function that I'm interested in investigating. So I've got 3 plus sine of x over x. Now, you might be remembering that we have the limit as x approaches 0 of sine of x over x equals 1. But that's not going to help us here as I try to investigate this as x goes to infinity. So that's kind of a, a different, this is a different type of problem. So to actually figure this out, this is actually very difficult in that I, if I plug in x going to infinity, just think about what happens as, as sine goes to infinity. It's just going to have kind of this up and down motion, right? And it's just going to kind of continue on with that. So that doesn't really help us with figuring out what happens on top here. And then in the bottom, it's like it's x. So this just gets bigger and bigger. But it's actually it's very difficult to kind of figure out what is the overall behavior of this. So because of that, I, I, I can't just simply evaluate this. So what we're going to want to do is use a sandwich theorem. So really, the only part I'm interested in is just this sine of x over x. If I can figure out what happens with that, I'm going to figure out the rest of this limit. So now let's um, try to think of what we could sandwich this in between. Well, we could sandwich this in between. So I'm going to just kind of choose an inequality that I know will work here. So I could sandwich um, this particular part in between in this inequality and now think about the absolute value here, or sorry, the, the, the limits of the two end pieces here. So if I take the limit as x approaches infinity of 0, well, that's just going to equal 0. And then that will actually be the same value as x approaches infinity of 1 over x. So because I know that this is sandwiched in between, this limit right here, then this is going to also equal zero by the sandwich theorem. So ultimately, then this limit is going to be three plus zero. So the answer here will just be three. So sometimes when you're trying to find horizontal asymptotes or when you're working with limits at infinity, you have to also bust out things like the sandwich theorem. So those can be tricky ones. 
And so that covers it for this particular video. So hopefully that was helpful. So if you have any questions, feel free to drop them in the comments. Uh, I do read, read the comments and I try to make this YouTube channel as helpful as I can for everybody. So um, definitely appreciate any guidance you guys give me. And otherwise that'll do it for this video. Hopefully I'll see you guys next time. Thanks for watching.